Um, I'm going to take a look at, at respiration. I'm going to ask you to cough, Paul. <coughs> Again? <coughs> Jenny? You know what? I'm cheating. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, she just said she was cheating. What did she do to cheat? And what is Paul doing? Does, that, does Paul have abdominals, the T4? Right, and that's what gives us the cough. So how is Paul, what is Paul doing to create some tension in her abdominal area? Go ahead and lean back, Paul. No cough. <laughs> okay. now, so what, what are you doing, Paul, to generate a more forceful cough? And, and he has, and I didn't know this, is he actually go up to the table and put your belly against the table, but that's not. <coughs> So he's mechanically creating some intra-abdominal pressure. Okay. What were you doing when you put your arms back through, Jenny? I push down. So I do the same thing. Um, so if and when I get sick with a bad cough, um, I will always try to, you know, just pull down when I cough. And typically using my arms, it's a lot easier than, you know, I think due to balance and strength, just pulling in isn't that good. So using biceps to pull down and in. I won't demonstrate a manual assist cough, but I will demonstrate the hand position for one. Jenny and I have, for 10 years, have never been able to coordinate. <laughs> when you cough, you take a deep breath and hold it to close your glottis. And then you forcefully open it. At the same time, you contract your abdominals very strongly and your <clears throat> um, external intercostal. Since Jenny can't do that, if I place my, the heel of my hand, I'm gonna find out where your xiphoid process is, come down below that. So the heel of my hand, let me see if the camera's down here. The heel of my hand is below the xiphoid, probably a little bit above the belly button. I'd say, Jenny, take a real deep breath and cough. And when she coughed, I would push down and up, time it so that as she is opening the glottis, I'm creating the pressure that the abdominals normally would. Paul's doing the same thing, leaning against the edge of a table. Jenny's doing the same thing by pushing down and letting her trunk flex a little bit. And you heard the difference. How would I rate that cough? I'd rate that cough as if <clears throat> um, I, I hear some pot potential production. So it's, a, um, it's not a strong cough, but it's not a weak cough. Um, when you do have a, a respiratory infection, are you able to bring something up? It takes a lot of work, so um, I will spend sometimes hours um, just trying to get the stuff up. So I have been really, really careful. I'm so excited to be here today because I have been really careful with COVID, just not going out because I just don't even want to risk um, that cough. Um, it just seems exhausting. So. Um, and it's ultimately dangerous, you know, as a quad, um, it could be pneumonia quite easily. So what kind of breathing pattern does Jenny have? If I, you've got your diaphragm, your intercostals and your neck accessories. If you use a system of rating <clears throat> of having of rating each one, most normal respiration is two diaphragm, two intercostals, about 50, 60% diaphragm, 40, 50% of intercostals. Jenny in this position is probably all diaphragm. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna take a deep breath. Can you see the expansion and out? Deep breath again and out. So you can see the expansion at the nipple line. We come down to the xiphoid process. So now this is going to be lower rib cage. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Can you see the retraction? And out. Take a deep breath and hold it. 
Can you see that rebound? When Jenny takes a breath, the diaphragm is pulling down. There is no opposing pull from the intercostals. So she's actually getting retraction at the lower rib cage. As she holds her breath, the diaphragm relaxes, it rebounds, so you get a rebound expansion. Some athletes will do that breathing technique. They'll take a breath, hold it, and take another breath, and then let it out to help increase the amount of expansion they're getting and increase the amount of air they're getting when they're working out. Paul at T4, is he going to have a similar breathing pattern to Jenny? What do you think? Take a deep breath. Yeah. Deep breath again. Yeah. Come down a little bit. Take a deep breath. I know. Not quite as much. There's a little bit of intercostal action. You don't see as much retraction. If you guys were to place your hands on your lower rib cage, take a deep breath you'll feel your fingers come apart because the intercostals are expanding the lower rib cage. So those, <clears throat> the abdominals do a good job of pre-positioning the diaphragm. When you have some abdominal tension, it holds the diaphragm up. Okay. <clears throat> so that you have a larger excursion, you can pull more area. If I don't have abdominals, then my diaphragm, instead of resting here, is down here, it only has that much excursion. So I don't pull as much area. So the vital capacity is going to be diminished, particularly after the new injury. Did you ever find that when you were playing sports and when you were racing, was it difficult sometimes to build up your endurance to get enough air? It is, but a lot of that for me is blood pressure as well, blood pressure and heart rate. Okay. So they all go together. Beyond the five minutes we have left. Uh, that'll be in tomorrow's video on YouTube as well. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. How's that for an intro? <laughs> Paul, how about yourself? Uh, in my racing chair, you're kind of moving your chest up and down off of your knees anyways. Okay. And, and so you just expand it as you come up, and then as you push down, you're letting out. So as you like when you lift weights, you push out when you lift the weight up. And so that's what I'm also doing is I'm pushing down in the racing chair. I'm kind of letting out also in there. I'm actually about to sit up. So with the loss of the abdominals, you're losing resting position of the diaphragm that decreases your vital capacity. You're losing your cough. 